How's it going there, YouTube? Well, we got kind of a cold, almost winter-like weekend up here this weekend. I haven't put too many videos out this week, just haven't had a whole lot going on. It's been kind of too cold to be out painting anything, so I figured, well, we'll start this week's video in the uh, scale model room here, I guess. But uh, that brings me to my first point, because I'm actually looking for a few things right now. Uh, I'll flip this phone around, I'll show you. I am looking to add to my Oliver Hardpar lineup here. I'm on the hunt for... Uh, Tease water, Oliver 80, 99. We'll consider cockshut variations as well. Also looking to add some stuff in here between my heart part number three and the 2844. Got a bit of a gap to fill in there. I do know Tease water put out a uh, 1836 heart part. I do believe he did a 1224 as well. So I'm kind of actively looking for that stuff. If you guys have one for sale or know of someone selling or come across a listing somewhere, let me know. Kind of looking to get back in some farm toy stuff here a little bit because, well, by looks of things, you're not going to have very many steam shows to go to this year, if any at all. I do have a cancellation update for you guys here too in a minute. Now, I'm kind of looking to stay in Canada here because, uh, well, I'll tell you guys a story. I was looking to add that uh, Ertl Authentics, the new 7150 Case International Combine with the International Harvester Retro Paint Scheme, the new Authentics that came out. Had no problem selling out for 35 40 bucks for the combine, but, you know, that's $60 a ship. No thanks, and you can keep it down there. So maybe I'll have to just plan a trick to Nick Jolly's here and uh, just see what he's got in stock. If he has that, I'll go down and pick it up. I know he's doing port side pickup right now, so uh, maybe when things get back to normal here, I'll have to go ahead and make a trip down there because I am looking for a few things, looking to get back some toy stuff here. But anyway, yeah, as far as our Steam Show cancellations go, yeah, there's been quite a few Steam Show cancellations this week, I found out. Right after I posted that uh, other video about cancellations, I found out the Bracebridge Show got canceled. I don't think I mentioned that in the video yet. Bracebridge got canceled at Elderton, Idlerton, and never been able to say that town properly. They're a featured international harvester this year, and I was going to take that W4 down there to A, have something to ride around on, and B, try to sell it down there because, well... Might not be the brightest ball in the box, but, you know, the show is featuring International Harvester. It'd be International Harvest Collectors there, and maybe someone's looking for a nice W4. Anyway, uh, I found out the Paisley show, Bruce County Heritage, it's been cancelled already. And the big kicker, I found out Mark on Ferry's been cancelled for this year, and that's all the way to the first week of October. So, we're still kind of on the fence here about Cookstown. Uh, we're 50-50 putting the show on hold, but I have a conference call there tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, so... Uh, if I find out some information, I'll get it out there for you guys, what I can share and whatnot. And as far as Melton goes, I think we're still trying to push to have a Melton show this year. So if we have one show this year, maybe I'll have to take two tractors, but we'll see what happens when the time comes. Anyway, I also wanted to show you guys here, I found this magazine in the uh, back cupboard here. This is the Canadian Antique Power magazine. Bill Ireland put this out. Of course, he's the same fellow from Tease Water Farm Toys. I don't believe this magazine ran very long. I do have a few issues there in the uh, file comic that Grandpa used to subscribe to. You can see this one's from uh, May, June, 1993. Oh, got it right there. Volume 1, number 1. There's some pretty neat stuff in here. Uh, take a little flip through here. I wanted to show you guys an advertisement I found, of course, for Tease Water Farm Toys. Oh, there's a cockshot 30 there in the back cover. Nick Jolly's got a kit like that, too. You get it in wider, narrow front. There you go, Tease Water Custom Tractor. Of course, we're doing 1530. Most of the stuff was a limited production. That's the uh, address down there, but of course, that's kind of null and void now because he's retired. Well, you got stuff for sale there. It's been a while since I looked through any of these old magazines. I might have to do that today because it's kind of a dark, dear, dreary kind of weekend. A few things. There you go. Kind of a neat old magazine. Oh, there's a Paris show. I don't even think that show runs anymore. Paris, Ontario. Got a video about that somewhere, too. Not one of my videos, but... Uh, what's his name now? PJ Barnes Films. John Goodison, steam engine there. Goodison. John Goodison was a... There's an Oliver relation there. I can tell you guys another video here, but uh, yeah, anyway. Oops. Well, that was great. 
Anyway, let's uh let's head out and look at that W4 here real quick. I haven't done a whole heck of a lot with it, but uh yeah, let's head out there to the tractor shop and show you guys a few things. Starting to rain out here a little bit now, but I picked this bolt up to replace that pin in the W4 seat where it pivots at. I don't know, don't remember if I showed you guys the pin or not. I lost it now. I think rolling my toolbox somewhere. But this is just a three-quarter bolt. It's uh hold on a sec. Yeah. Gotta fix my shed door too on these days. This is gonna go in there. Cause the pin was all half wore out down here. It's awkward when you drive the tractor up the trailer or go over humps and whatnot, cause the seat, when you sit in the seat, it goes like this. So when your seat rocks to the right and you got a left hand clutch, it's kind of awkward to drive. But I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup here in that hole, cause of course I got a bit of a egged out hole there a little bit. So I'll take a file or a drill, if I have a three quarter drill bit. I'll take and drill that out and clean it up a little bit and maybe that'll tighten up our seat slot here. That should help tighten things up a little bit and the seat won't be so sloppy to ride on. Also picked up some longer bolts to go on the platform where those square headed bolts were. Here we'll go over here. Oh, it's a raining. Oh yeah, I took a load of scrap metal in yesterday. It's barely worth a large pizza in a truck wash. <laughs> anyway, I picked up some bolts here and then so I can put my plates back on because you guys might remember when I took the tractor apart, there were square headed taps in there. And I figured, well, you can't really get square headed taps. I never did ask a John Deere because they were closed yesterday and I forgot to go on Friday. But these are a little bit longer hexagon bolts and of course now everything's gonna match, but you know, it's not exactly correct, but at the same time, don't think I was going to really look all that hard at it, but anyway, these will go in there. Took my little example with me here, of course. So I got that looked after. Got that plate painted up. I was kind of didn't really want to tap on that where it's a little bit dented right there. Didn't want to tap on that too much. Of course, it got a little rust hole in it, but then, you know, very surprising for a tractor from 1951. It's very rust free. If I can find another one of those plates somewhere at a Rutgers or something like that, I'll pick it up and put it on there. Uh, what have I done with this thing since I updated you guys last time? Oh, I got that voltage box back together. You guys might be able to see there. I cleaned that gauge up. I'm going to do a little bit better job here. I didn't quite get it perfect, but uh, that'll work. I got the voltage box back together. I got to buff this switch up a little bit. But, you know, hey, that's all detail stuff. Got the knob painted up and back on there. Got the clamp painted to hold this... Uh, hold the wire limb to the steering column but what i was gonna do they've got that nice corrugated wire limb at princess auto of course it was at princess auto this morning i forgot all about looking at that because i know exactly where it is i just have to go get it not expensive or anything just have to do it <laughs> now the harbor stores are all open this weekend again i can go ahead and get that and get that back together and then uh, i think the next big thing i'll be getting the fuel tank back up there started to work on this uh plate over here you got a granny inside of that still ground this side of it this is what i was talking about in the other video they had that piece of round stock welded on there it's kind of a pin you ass to get it off there but we'll work our way out of there one day it's not too nasty of course i could work in the shop today but it is sunday today so that's where we're at with that i kind of got a little violent there so might have to use a little bit of bondo on that or something because i'm not gonna leave it like that but i don't really want to use bondo on a tractor to be honest with you but whatever oh i gotta get this 145 out of here one day and get it cleaned up and washed off from the winter time and get this w4 out of it we want to get that seat paint and get it back together and i can actually back this thing out of the way and then we can uh get the hard power out and go for a little ride but yeah i've done a whole heck of a lot since the last video at least on the W4 anyway. Got that back together and got the draw bar bolts painted up. I was hoping to have a lot of stuff done this weekend, have a good update for you guys, but oh, the weather wasn't cooperated. And after hauling all that scrap and yesterday, I didn't feel like doing a whole heck of a lot. So went and got a few things. I got get that temporary fuel tank off of there and whatnot. Now that TSC store is open back up, I'm thinking I'm going to bend a new fuel line up for it and put some new fittings on because I buggered up the one up there in the this end that goes into the sediment bowl. I do have a new sediment bowl, even though it's a John Deere sediment bowl. 
I better be careful, you know. I got this John Deere buff primer and a John Deere sediment bowl. I better watch this tractor don't start running on two cylinders, but <laughs> can't have none of that two cylinder business on a red tractor. But anyway, I guess that's pretty much it for this video. If you guys like what you see as always, please comment, rate, subscribe, and I want to thank you guys for staying tuned to the videos here. And uh, we'll see you on the next one. So have a good week.